Hello, welcome to another edition of the Screen Savers. I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm a dancing fool. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you for joining us coming up in today's show. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. Let me guess. You're wearing your college sweatshirt. It must be day one of the collegiate PC. Me, 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 me. Oh, if you're gonna wear, if you're gonna wear a Pace sweatshirt, I'm gonna have to wear my alma mater. Yale. Tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, sure, sure. Yale Baloney Festival. You had a band? No, I don't know. <laughs> Patrick, did you build it? Did you build the Kalisha PC? Uh, Roger built it. Roger I built it. it. You shopped for it. Yeah, we all shopped. You guys went with a credit card, with, a, with Ken Marcus's credit card, the producer's credit card. We melted the credit card and the credit card machine. It was a beautiful sight, folks. So we're going to look at every part, every bit, every piece, and uh, yeah. you're going to show us what you got. We're going to tell you all about what's I'm going on. I'm actually very, TV. very intrigued. Stay tuned, my friends and neighbors. This is something to stay tuned for. Patrick uh, will also, not only that, he will juggle fiery video cards at the same time. Can we get the chainsaw? <laughs> Actually, no. There's something even better. We're going to give it away. Yeah. We're going to give it away. Now, yeah. now if, if, this is the rules are very complicated, so you got to pay attention. I'm going to let you do this because okay. you're a master. <laughs> now that Leo's got your attention, I get to lose it. <laughs> We're going to show you how to go about revamping uh, that old Macintosh. Oh, this is, you're not going to explain the rules. The rules yeah, are on the website. Yeah, the rules are the rules on the website. I'm not but it. the key is... Do I look like a lawyer? What are the dates we're going to do this? July 25th, 26th, and 27th, and that's it. So if you're watching this at a later date, we already gave it away, folks. You didn't win. I got bad news. You didn't win. But, right. but if you're watching it now, you can win. You might have won. Yeah. You made a website. But now we can move on. Dot com. Now we can move on. I just wanted to get them clear on that. Are you sure? Yeah. Am I clear on that? I don't know. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> now that we got your attention, we're going to show you how to go about revamping, rebuilding, rejuvenating your old Macintosh Power PC, the one you've been hiding in the basement. Yeah, or maybe not, depending oh. on which one it is. Then later, Sumi Das takes a fresh look at the latest version of the Rio MP3, the 600th year, and they've got it on fresh gear. <laughs> I rhyme. I don't think that yeah, is good. I like it when he does that. And then, as if all that beautiful stuff wasn't enough, we've compiled the usual list, the extraordinarily intellectually challenging that that exciting. What are you talking about? The top downloads, man. That's right, baby. We might right. have a new one. We had a poll uh, yesterday. Let's check the results uh, of the poll. Our question uh, from yesterday was: Would you use a driver, in this case the Asus video driver for the right. GeForce card, to cheat at gaming? And it was 50-50. That means half the people out there might well be cheating. Uh-oh. Asus hey, pulled the driver back, but that's, it. Boy, that's interesting, isn't it? I, that's, uh, I'm going to go into death matches with a whole new state of mind. Patrick, what do you think? Take a guess. Take a wild guess. What do you think newspapers? Do you think circulation up or down? Uh, I would assume that circulation is down. Because of the Internet? Because people don't read anymore, Leo. People don't read this right. <laughs> with all okay. due respect to the Internet. You would be right, sir. What would you guess? Circulation down, revenues up or down? Well, I've, I, I, I know it today. It's top you know the answer. So I, I can what would what you guess? guess? What did you guys think? How about you, Fred? Circulation is down. It, revenues up or down? It would be down, Leo. You would have to be down, wouldn't it? No, you would be wrong, my friend. <laughs> you would be wrong. Fred, go hang your head in the corner. The question of the day, are newspapers dead? And you know what? It's interesting. that the, the, the new studies are out today that all the major newspapers, USA Today, the Wall Street, their revenues are up. They're I making more money than ever before. I think, you, I think you nailed it on the head earlier why they're making so much money. Why? All that dot-com money, dot com. spending on advertising anywhere they can. Now, people in the past, every time a new medium comes out, they say the old medium's dead. <laughs> TV came out, they said radio was dead. Uh, movies came out that said the radio was dead. Newspapers, they've been saying the death knell of newspapers for years. Yeah. It's, it's, and, and it's true that many markets, like New York City, San Francisco, yeah. had dozens of newspapers and now only have one or two. Uh, so they're dying, maybe. Newsprint prices up. Mm -hmm. Costs more to deliver the papers. Yep. Circulation down, and yet they're still making more money. My my thing is, I don't think the internet's going to kill newspapers. I think you hit more on the head. I think people just don't read. The people don't read, and you know what? When they do read, they tend to be really attached to the way they read, and it's a long. It's going to be a long time before, take a while. before electronic books are affordable, yeah. or before we all have those cute so you don't think they're dead. around with. You think newspapers survive? You know what? They're going to be hurting. They're going to be transitioning. They may eventually move to an electronic medium. It's a long time. Before. It's going to be a while. A couple yeah. of seconds. Yeah, I have to agree with you. I think they are. Done Dying, but they're not dead yet. They're not dead yet. Not yet. What do you think? Take our web poll. It's at thescreensavers.com. Click on the talk back feature. Tell us what newspaper you read. Why? Do you pay for it? Is it? Uh, is our newspaper still a part of your life? Hey.
You know what? That might be a part of your life over the web. We, Wall Street Journal, New York Times. I, I have Chronicle. to say, I love sitting down with my, my bowl of Cheerios in the morning reading the paper. I've got to do that. Got to do that. Man's got to have his Cheerios. Got to have my Cheerios in my newspaper. But you, you guys got to give us a call on the telephone at 888-989-7879. You can chat with us at always on your computer at chat.zdtv.com. Just go to the screensavers room or who knows who you'll be chatting with out there. Yeah. Oh, unless you have a net cam, don't go to the screensavers room. We want you to win a magnet. If you, uh, if you have a net cam and we get you on the air, we're going to give you a magnetic picture frame. But you got to get through some tough screening. The screening today provided in the net cam cineplex by the lovely and talented Shannon and John Mark. Are you in there, guys? Oh, yeah, we're hey in there. there. Shannon, who's that lady with you? We have John Mark's mother, oh, Mrs. Nichols, right, with us. Hey, Mrs. Hey, oh, hey. Nichols. Hi. How are you? Oh, yeah. I'm helping us screen the calls, actually. Oh, oh, hey, that's really, is that true? Actually, these guys are doing all the work. I'm just having fun watching. Oh, that's so great. I love that. <laughs> well, have a wonderful time in there, Mom, and uh, get some good calls for us, okay? Oh, oh yeah. Will. Call that's Mrs. Nichols now. <laughs> John Mark's, John Mark's lovely uh, uh, mother is in there. I almost said sister because she looks so young. Oh, so aren't I smooth? Suave. This is my witty and your main friend, Leo. So yeah. get a magnetic picture frame and uh, get on the air with us. On the magnetic picture yep. frame on the fridge today. Who do we have in the frame? It's the big mouth Leo Bass. <laughs> that's actually from a website, isn't it? Richard Feindale did that. I think that's on the Fanatics website. They have a whole... Fishy, fishy, fishy. <laughs> Billy, Big Math Leo Bass website on there right now. <laughs> Make it go away, you fanatic. <laughs> Make the evil bass go away. Get your bass on the, I mean, the uh, your picture on the fridge. <laughs> Just send it to the screensavers at ZDTV.com. Put a picture of my bass in the subject line. Also, we now have an onset fax machine if you want to fax your bass. Yep. And that is, uh, that number oh, is... Or a question. Or a question. Or a you know what? A lot of times we get great answers. Yeah. So it's a really good place to answer. It's 415-437-5869. That number again, folks. 415-437-5869. I memorized it. Thank you very much. And that is only during the live broadcast from 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern. We don't want to kill a whole bunch of blue trees. No. Okay? That would be bad. Meanwhile, questions? Get on with our questions. All right. Neil joins us on the ZDTV NetCam Network from the beautiful Alabaster, Alabama. Ooh, Alabaster, Alabama. How's it going tonight, Neil? Hey, guys. Doing pretty good. Excellent. What can we do for you? Well, I got, uh, partially because of you guys' recommendation, I got me a Linksys router. All right. And I was having lots of trouble with uh, ICS and, and, and two NICs and this kind of stuff. But my network now works great with that router. Good. But my He's doing internet connection sharing using a router. He wasn't able to get it working as well. I have to translate. I'm sorry for you now. <laughs> for just a moment. Yeah. He was trying to do it in software on Windows 98, but now he's using the router. And everything's working great. Is it working as fast as before? Uh, definitely. All right. Because yeah. I got one guy called me up and said, uh, cable modem slowed down incredibly with the Linksys. And we haven't had that experience either. So it must no, have something about it. It's definitely fast. What can we do for you? My question is, is there a way to, uh, to programmatically query that link this router and find out what the current WAN address is? You mean the MAC address or the IP address? The IP address. All right. And so in other words, it's set for DHCP. It doesn't have a static IP address. Exactly. I know I can use the, the HTTP uh, admin screen and get it, but, but I'm wanting uh, you know, a, a slicker way to get it. Well, yeah, we don't. I mean, you know, uh, I don't know of any software that's written. You could probably write yeah. some software. It wouldn't be that difficult. Um, that's a that's a tough one though. So I don't even know. I think, and I'm not so sure. Can you actually get it? Or can you get it in the interface? In the inter uh, through HTTP, you can. Yeah. yeah. There's a yeah. status screen that shows it to you. The uh, web-based interface. That means you can get it. Yeah. Now uh, we'll look and see if anybody's written any software. But I want to tell you, yeah. do you write any software yourself? Yeah. Yeah. It's a very easy thing to do. There's a programming language that I would recommend doing this in, and called Rebel. R E B O L. Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not. What, uh, it's, it's free. You can download it from rebel.com. And what Rebel allows you to do is do things like HTTP queries in one or two lines. So uh, it's a really phenomenal for Internet uh, interrogation. You can it literally one line download all your email because it has built-in SMTP, built-in POP, built-in FTP, and built-in HTTP. So it's very easy to create an HTTP query. So since we know, what you'll want to do is you want to look at the source code, the HTML source code for that page. And since we know that it's able to query and get that information, we're basically going to kind of send a request for that page 
and parse the page and just output the information you want specifically. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that's what since, since all you, If you do that URL, send out that URL, whatever it is, to the, to the link this box, it sends back a web page with the information you want. Cool. It, which is basically a stream of text. All you got to do is cut off everything except for the except for the IP address. Okay. And you can do that in Rebel in literally a couple of three lines. You know, if you're a programmer that uses Perl or any other simple scripting language, it'd be easy too. Okay. But Rebel, because Rebel has HTTP uh -huh. built in, you, you basically say HTTP get. Here's the URL. Here's the text stream, and then you process the text stream. Uh, if you're a programmer, you could probably do it in about an hour. Okay, yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah, and it's an interpreted language, which means you could put an icon, once you got Rebel installed, you could put an icon on the desktop, you double click it, it would be very simple to just have it open a window and say, this is the IP address. So basically, you'd be writing your own WinIP config for that list, link this uh, 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 router. Okay, yeah, sounds if, good. If you do that, Neil, uh, uh, send it to us so we can put it up on the website. Okay. And, you know, if I get a chance to, uh, maybe the uh, next couple of days, I've got a Perl script I've got to write for a feature we're going to do next week, but maybe that would be a fun one to write. And it's very easy in a language like Rebel. Okay. Thanks, Neil. Sounds good. And we'll see if we can find somebody who's pre-written one. But, I mean, this is uh, the kind of thing. Good stuff. A language like Rebel is, it, it, is really designed for you to roll your own. Yeah. Because, you, you know, and you've got something. Let me, let me the, 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 Rebel.nl. Oh, that's you got the, the, they're actually local. So you've uh, got the, you've got the, the Rebel.com Rebel. is the Canadian, uh, uh, networking manufacturer. Maybe Dribble.net. We'll find it for you. Well, try Dribble.net. You got the Netherlands Dribble, but yeah, that's another place to get it. Hey, listen. We had the guy on. You were here, and, and it was really fascinating. This is, that's amazing that they can actually automate all that stuff inside oh, the language. Fabulous. Really great. I show. like it yeah. because it's simple and it's easy, and yeah. I can't program to save my life. You could do this. <laughs> you could do this. Even I can program. You could do this. All right. After the break this week, top downloads when the screensavers continue. Continue. Yeah. to see the folks at the ZDNet Software Library. Yes, my friends, it's yet another week of the fabulous top downloads. Looking awful cute in the rear of this week's pack, it's cute FTP. Number four does not keep food fresh, but it's handy anyway. It's called WinZip. In the middle with that little flower icon that means it's really friendly, ICQ. Number two is still stomping on Tokyo, one paper mache building at a time, Godzilla. Drum roll, please, for this week's top download. Keeping the world safe from online baddies, it's Zonal. 
You can download any of these programs and so, so many more from the ZDNet software library at hotfiles.com. Now let's hear from Leo. So, Leo, what you got going on over there? Well, guess what, Patrick? I've got another question coming in now over the telephone from Random Lake, Wisconsin. Scott is on the line. Hello, Scott! Hello, Leo. How you doing? I'm doing great. We are getting the funniest name in Alabaster, Alabama, now Random Lake. Yeah, this, this lake wasn't planned, so <laughs> it showed up one day, and we're living there. It's just random. Uh, came out of nowhere. That's what, great. <laughs> what can we do for you? Well, I'd like some help with an Internet Explorer annoyance. Yes. I'm stuck with a 56K modem, so I'm a power browser. Okay. I've usually got at least three windows open at one time. Yeah. And what I'm finding is that uh, as I'm reading one page, another page finishes loading, and pop. Oh, I hate that. the dominant dominant window. Isn't that annoying? Oh, it's annoying as all heck. Um, and so you, and you now what you have to click is the under, underlying window to get back to where you were. Right. So you don't want that to happen anymore. Exactly. Interesting question. I got one thing that might work, and I, you know what, you're, when you said you were a power browser, that kind of gave me the idea. Uh, we've talked about uh, Analog X before. He's our kind of tame programmer. Okay. It's really good to know programmers. Uh, because, especially a really good one like Analog X, because they can write stuff for you. I, you know, last question. The answer was really to write your own. Uh, in this case, you don't have to. I'm going to go to AnalogX.com. Now, I'm, I'm just guessing that he has a program called Power Browse that does Windows management, and it may very well be something that will solve your problem. Let me just, uh, we're going to go to his site. This is AnalogX.com, and uh, it's a network, and I'm going to scroll down here to the very bottom browser add-ons, and uh, he has one, by the way, that a lot of people will want called PAL, which kills pop-up windows. So that's one you're going to want to download. But the nice thing is these are small files, easy to download. Take control of multi-window browsing with the power of Analog X Power Browse. What it does, he showed me this once, and it was hard for me to get, but it, it allows you to have only one visible while the other are in the background, and then you can switch very easily from one to the other. Okay, and it sounds to me like it's going to do exactly what you want to do, which is you're browsing a window. The other windows are hidden, even if they continue to load. Right. You only go to when you want. When you close the one window, the next one in the queue will pop up for you. Okay. But only one window is visible at a time. It's only 21K to download. It's a tiny, tiny download. He writes these in very compact C. Uh, and, and it sits in the system tray. In fact, I think I have it. I do believe I have it on my system because I, I downloaded it real quickly when, here we go. So now it's going to sit in the background of my system tray, and I can go in search mode or surf mode, and you probably want to do it in search mode. Just play with this to see if it's going to do what you want, but I think it is. Okay. I think it is. I can't, because our connection is so fast here, I probably can't simulate your problem because by the time I go to a page, it's loaded, you know. Um, so let me... Let me, I don't, yeah, see, it's just too, I can't, I can't click fast enough, I can't, to do it. But I think that this is going to do what, do the job you want. Notice, by the way, even though I'm loading new, if, what you'll do is control N is what you're doing, right? Okay. You, is that what you're doing? You're having multiple? I'm just going down to the start bar, and then I'm just clicking on another window to open it up. To open it up. So you're doing control N to create a new window. Right. What Power Browse does is it keeps those, it's exactly that, keeps those other windows hidden away until you want them. And I believe even if the window is continuing to load, it'll, it'll work. Oh, great. So give that a shot. Would you send me an email tell me if it worked? I will do that. I, you know, Mark, Mark Thompson, Analog X, showed me this program, and he said, it's really great. And I said, Mark, I have no use for this at all, but I remember it. And I think we found another person who will like this. All, All right, right, fantastic. All right, say hi to everybody in Random Lake. I will do that. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Take care. We got an email from Jim. I want to read it to you right now. He says, I have a Power Mac 7200 at home. I can get an 8100, but here's the thing. I want a new G4. I can't afford it. Should I upgrade the old 7200, get the 8100 to upgrade that one, or should I just keep saving my money and get a G4 one day? One day? The truth, the dirty little truth about upgrading your computer when the screen savers continue.
So, Jim asks, we get this question all the time, not just about Macs, but all kinds of computers. What should I do? Upgrade the existing PC or buy a new one? Well, he's got an unusual situation because he's got a Mac that's impossible to upgrade. First thing you do when you're talking about Macs is you go to this, one of these websites. This is the one we like, lowendmac.com. And it is a website for people who are in this specific position and the older Mac, and they're trying to figure out, what can I do with my older Mac? Is it worth upgrading, or should I save up for a better uh, Mac? You can literally click on the link to the Mac you want, uh, the Mac you've got, and it'll tell you what you can do. Uh, in this case, we're going to go to the Power Macintosh pages, and we're going to go to the 7100, where you're going to get the very bad news that the 7100 was specifically designed by Apple not, I'm sorry, 7200, specifically designed by Apple not to be upgraded. Apple didn't want to poach the sales of its 7500, and so it introduced a computer that couldn't be upgraded. So you're, you're actually kind of in it. Here's another page, as long as I'm showing web pages, called Accelerate Your Mac. Same kind of information. There's also everymac.com because there are a lot of people who want to upgrade their Macs. Here, we don't have a 7100 lying around, I'm sorry to say. What we have here, what we have, or 7200, I should say. What we have here is a 7600. This is upgradable. Um, let me, we're going to go inside and show you why it's upgradable. It has a slot right here where the processor sits, a zip slot, slot which can be replaced. The processor can be pulled and replaced in this slot. So that's a 7600. You don't have the slot. You've got a processor soldered onto the motherboard in your system. There's no way to remove it, no way to upgrade it. So one solution, really the only solution for your existing Mac, is to replace the motherboard. Go out and find a used, say, 76 or 81, uh, 7600 motherboard, put it in there, and then you can do the upgrade. Here's the upgrade that I'm going to recommend for you. This is, we got from this from Sonic Technology. This is great, man. I'll tell you, 299 this is a wonderful upgrade. This, you can pop in. It's a G3. You're going to, so you're going to take this old aluminum heat sink and pop in this nice purple aluminum heat sink. The Crescendo G3. It's 400 megahertz with a one megabyte backside cache running at processor speed for 299. So, what, what about 100 bucks for the motherboard? 299 for 300 or 400 bucks. You're going to be able to upgrade your system to a 400 megahertz G3. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Except when I tell you the same problem on PCs. We're not, we're only upgrading the processor. We're not upgrading the hard drive. We're not upgrading the RAM. We're not upgrading the motherboard. Everything else is still running at that same old low and slow 160 or 120 megahertz and it's just not going to be a fast computer. When they show the benchmarks for these, they use MacBench, which is a CPU only benchmark. They don't show the benchmark for the overall system speed. Yeah, your CPU is 10 times faster, but because it's running, it's, you, put, you basically put this Ferrari engine in a Subaru body. Hey, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I won't say Subaru. He's got a Subaru. Uh, yeah, it, it, well, I, How about a Geo? I got a Geo. Yeah. You put in a Ferrari engine in a Geo body, and the whole thing is just not going to be sluggish. You're not going to see anywhere near that performance. Are yeah, you you're not. And you know what? This is this is like sort of the dark days of Macintosh system design. Oh, this is you, you look at the case. I mean, if you think about the QCI and you look at the G4 and the new Cube, right? Elegant design they had before and after. This, this whole thing it. was a mess. <laughs> this is the Gil Emilio, Michael Spindler. They called Michael Spindler yeah. the CEO of Apple at this time, the Diesel. I give you the diesel's computer. He said he could get an 8100, too. Well, 8100 is upgradable. You, in here, you've got a PDS, a processor direct slot, which makes it pretty easy to upgrade. They're a little bit more expensive. I don't even know if I can get in here. I'm not going to try. Uh, they're a little bit more expensive. But, yeah, you can get those kind of upgrades. But, folks, 350 megahertz iMac with a G3, 350 megahertz, it's 799 in September. So you sure, yeah, this is the 8100. Sure, you can do the upgrade. Uh, you could go with the 8100, put the PDS in there. You could put a new motherboard in your 7200, uh, uh, put this zip in. But you're going to spend 400 bucks, and you're not going to get anywhere near the performance that you would like. And for a few hundred dollars more, you can get an iMac. It's going to look better. It's going to run better. It's got hard drives designed to run at the speed of the processor. In general, PC or Mac, something this old is just not worth upgrading. All right, your limited budget, 400 bucks, that's how you do it. But I wouldn't recommend it.
Folks, stay where you are. Still to come on this very show, the collegiate PC Pat's working on it. He's working on it right now. You can win it. He's buffing it up, making it shiny, making it feel good. We're going to show you how we put it together and what you do to win. Plus, answer some more of your calls in just a bit. And Sumi Dust has the new Rio MP3 player. We'll see if she likes it. I got the old Rio. I'll tell you, I like that. It's on today's Fresh Gear. All that and more as the screen savers rolls on, my friend. Welcome back to the screen tips. I was just running our little rebel program here to download the. Uh, never mind. It's good. good. It's fun. It's really fun. Look at this. It's really cool. I mean, I can just yeah. go out. I'll, before the show is over, I will have a little bit of rebel code that will go out, get a web page, and display it. Then it's just a process of parsing, parsing it. This is the rebel interpreter right here. You work in this. Very simple to do. Uh, I'm Patrick Norton, and I'm amazed. Leo, report, folks. I'm coding. This is live silly. television. This is unprecedented. This is silly. Hey, we're giving away a college PC. Yes, we are. Well, so, what, what, tell me a little bit about the process involved in this. Well, we, we sat down and we decided what we would want if we were going back to college versus what we could probably afford if we were going back to college and try to figure out a good balance of a system that was more of a geek system, right? So we got a fair amount of power. We want to be able to sure. game on this thing? We'd be able to game on this All thing, right. be able to do your homework on this thing, be able to wait. use Linux on this thing, wait. and just, just take advantage of everything. But the best part is, folks, we built it. 
you could win it. Yeah. Details on the webpage. I want every one of you to enter that contest now. Because if this goes well, we're going to do more of this. We're, this is a test yeah. to see if people would actually be interested in something that we build with our little. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're asking the chat room, are newspapers dead? News story came out that the major newspapers' revenues are up, even though circulations are down. Newsprint costs are up. Revenues are up. How does that work? More ads, I guess. Either that, more ads, or uh, a higher uh, advertising edit ratio, or just charging more for the ads. Charging more. Yeah, they well, do it's it. a good thing. It means there's at least three or four people out there that still read. I love newspapers. I'm glad newspapers uh, live on. I don't know if it's a good use of trees. You know, maybe I think it's not. I tell you, I still I do read a lot of news on the web, but I still read that daily paper. Well, I love that you read that about the, the landfill? Yeah. The newspapers, the landfill. They decompose. The no. They don't. It's, it's because of the landfill, it's covered over with dirt. There's no oxygen. Right. They pulled out newspapers, perfectly readable, that were 40 years old. That's good because the libraries are throwing them out. So at least we know we can read them in the landfill. Get to the website. Ask the question. Are newspapers dead? You give us your answer at thescreensavers.com. Oh, man. And Dave joins us from the ZDTV NetCam Network from Fort Bragg, North Carolina. There you go. Hey, Dave. How are you, you doing, Patrick and Leo? Are you in the service? Oh, yes. Yeah. Army? Army. All right. Of course. The only branch of service. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I should have known. What, what, what am I, nuts? What are you doing in the Army? Uh, well, I'm on the United States Army Parachute Team, the Golden Knight. No, oh, we had a picture of you, didn't we, on the fridge? Uh, no, not we yet. Didn't? Well, we gotta get one. I'll send you one. You're in the Golden Knight? Oh, yeah. I am stunned! <laughs> that is awesome! It is awesome. That is so great. And you go all over the country performing, right? Everywhere. That must uh, be really fun. Every weekend in different cities throughout the United States. That's and a great honor, isn't it, to be a Golden Knight? Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's, a, it's a dream. It's, I'd have to say it's the best job in the Army. And in the world besides your job. So, so. you were, well, I don't know, you were, you were a paratrooper and you got selected to be a Golden Knight? Is that how it works? Uh, yeah, you put an application in and then uh, you try out for the team. How long's the tour? Three years. Wow, nice. Isn't that cool? I like it. A paratrooper and a computer geek. Which brings us, I gotta ask Dave, have you ever jumped with a notebook or some other kind of computer? <laughs> no. Oh, well, come on, well, wait a minute. Hey, you gotta give him a neck cam. Yeah. Give him a neck cam. We're gonna put it on your helmet. I don't wanna see it. Well, you could do that, couldn't you? Well, that's that's part of my question. I jump with a video camera, like uh -huh. a digital video camera, and a 35 millimeter camera. Okay. And I, I edit it to uh, so the end of the year. We give out videos and stuff, and we sure. do tandem videos, and oh, we man. want to edit it. Well, I have a laptop, and uh -huh. I also have a desktop. Right. Set up for that. Right. And that's basically why I'm calling because I want to be able to edit the video on my desktop or my sure. laptop either way. Okay. What? Um, and how are you doing it right now? Well, we have a, um, a linear system. Oh, you, you're using like an Avid or an iMix or something, but you want yeah. to do it. At, well, I'll tell you what, and I'm doing this on my uh, my Macintosh. It's made for this, but you've got to use digital video. Are you using, shooting digital video? Or? Yeah, we have a Sony TRV-10. Perfect. Right. And I have uh, ULED Dazzle's. Uh, oh, yeah, that's a great product. But I, I've tried one video, and it's only the, the videos are only like four minutes long. Right. And uh, the problem at the end, it starts getting real choppy. Yeah. Right. Okay, let's talk. This is a very common thing. Video playback, choppy. It happens a lot on PCs. How do we do it? How big, do we fix it? big problem is actually uh, the length of video versus how much hard drive you have versus how much memory you have. Um, and the any time you're capturing video, you basically want to throw as much power at it. You, you're balancing, like, compression, I think, and, and how much I'll memory. I'll tell you, number one thing I would yeah. do, have you, uh, Dave, defragged the disk? Well, yeah, I have a 15 gig. Uh -huh. Hard drive that hardly has anything on it. And that's dedicated to video, huh? Well, I have, well, I just bought a 30 gig hard drive. <laughs> wow. Well, is that enough? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plenty. For four minute videos? Yeah. Are you pulling it over the Dazzle or are you pulling it over a 1394 card? Uh, it's a 1394 card came with the it's uh, FireWire, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a FireWire card. Yeah. No kidding. And you're actually, so you're getting some video, you're getting some video problems at the end of the stuff you're pulling over the 1394 card? Yeah, it, it gets real chuck. It's like watching Max Headroom at the end. Right. Just real that what is, what's happening is it's yeah. dropping frames. When you drop frames, it's exactly what happens, and it can't it, because it can't keep yeah. up. Right. But why it can't keep up? Yeah. It, it, there are a couple of possibilities. Defragging the hard drive is number one. You want to make sure that that's a right. straight stream you're writing out there. But lots of memory and nothing else going on in the background. Now you got to check that computer, make sure you don't have any background processes. Mm -hmm. You know, a big a big bad one is FindFast, which Ooh. is the index of it. Microsoft. Off. Off. Yeah, good for you. You know what you're doing. Hey. Um, Man doesn't jump out of airplanes. <laughs> he knows what he's doing, I hope. 
I, I, well, the question is, is uh, I have everything turned up. I, I've used, uh, uh, was it uh, config? Or, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. MS config. Yeah, MS config. killed all of those processes. That's had all good. that turned off. Now, should I put the the ULED uh, video studio on the 30 gig hard drive and run it from no. that hard drive? No. no. Put it on your regular C drive. Yep. Okay. Keep one drive that's yeah. just for video, nothing else. Okay. Any chance are those are those hard drives? Are you running the master and slave on the same channel? Uh, no. It's separate. Well, you've done all the right things. Make your swap uh, file a static size swap file. Okay. Uh, so it's not maybe maybe it's maybe it's enlarging the swap file. Yeah. How much RAM do you have on it then? 128. Well, you're in pretty good shape. I, it shouldn't be ha that shouldn't be happening. It could it could merely be that he's got bad firewire drivers or right. something like that. You might want to see if you got newer drivers out there. Yeah. Anybody who's using this system and, and has some suggestions for Dave, I'd love to hear from you. So yeah. fax us, okay? Right. Right. Doesn't think work, we're out of time because I wasted all that time asking you about the Golden Knights, but I'm glad I did. <laughs> I'll send cool. you a picture. Would you please? I sure will. That is awesome. And you're going to do some work for us. It's not yep. as exciting as the work you do uh, during the day, but maybe we can find something. I'm going to go off to chat. Leo's off to chat. I'm off to chat. Leo's off to chat. Dave, will you take us out for the break? I sure will. Well, thanks, Patrick thanks. and Leo. Sumi Doss takes her MP3 to go when the screensavers continue. Thank you. Good going. Nicely done. The Screensaver's Jot, Jot, the Screensaver's Dot Com, more fun than jumping out of an airplane. The little hanky tied to your back. You think computer behaving, is behaving illogically? It probably thinks the same about you, frankly. Take this week's Super Geek Challenge about computer logic, and you might learn how to communicate better with your little silicon buddy. And you can register to win a free Screensaver's T-shirt or cap. Where you ask? The Screensaver's Dot Com. And congratulations to Scott from Marietta, Georgia. He's the winner of yesterday's Super Geek Quiz T-shirt or cap giveaway. There's Tux, ladies and gentlemen. You want to leave out of here or what? <laughs> Tux, you got a mouth on you. He's reading the paper. Hey, Tux! Now here's Sumi Dots with the new Rio 600 MP3 player from S3 on today's Fresh Gear. <laughs> In this MP3 crazed world, there are tons of ways to play your downloaded or encoded tunes. 
Every time we turn around, there's a new player in our midst, trying to win over the masses. S3, which acquired Diamond, has just come out with their latest portable player, the Rio 600. But you might not want to rush out for this one. The first thing you notice about the new Rio is its sleek new design. Weighing just over two ounces, the curvaceous Rio 600 fits nicely into the palm of your hand. The function buttons have been simplified, and even though the LCD displays a load of information, the tab-driven menu system makes navigation easy. The Rio 600 boasts a radical new design feature, one that may turn out to be its Achilles heel. Instead of traditional memory cards, S3 uses 32 megs of internal memory. If you want to add more memory, you'll have to buy a backpack, which slides onto the back of the Rio. The memory is proprietary, so you can't use the popular smart media or compact flash format. Sound quality is good, but not impressive. The included earphones, which wrap oddly around your ears, sound pretty good. The Rio 600's firmware is upgradable and is now compatible with both MP3 and WMA digital formats, and will eventually be compatible with Dolby's AAC and the Audible format. The Rio 600 uses an odd USB cable that plugs right into the headphone jack. The Rio port software works with both Windows and Mac systems, and although not as seamless as Creative Nomad software, it gets the job done. For the fashion conscious, you'll be able to purchase extra snap-on faceplates for the Rio 600. A package of three different colors will cost around $25. The new Rio line takes a stab at style and expansion, and it does a reasonable job for the most part. The price of $170 is indeed competitive, but the real story is whether or not S3 will deliver on its promise of functional backpacks that will add value to the Rio 600 and ultimately to the consumer experience. Until then, wait the Rio 600 out. We give the S3 Rio 600 two out of five stars. It costs $169 and is available now. Guess I'm going to stick with my Rio 500. You can catch a new fresh gear every weekend afternoon, 1230 Eastern, right here on ZDTV. All right, we've been talking about it all day. We assembled the perfect PC for the perfect student. And guess what? We're giving it away. It's the collegiate PC when the screensavers continue. So you're going to make this thing, huh? Screensavers.com is the only place where you can win our very own custom-built collegiate PC built by uh, myself, collegian, and uh, Roger and a bunch of other collegial types. Just go to the giveaway page, take the quiz, and follow the instructions to register to win our custom-built college PC. That's right. Specifications, recommended monitor, viewing distance, and instructions on how to win the PSS PC. It's all at the Screensavers.com. And folks, i got to tell you, you don't even have to be a college student to win. I want to correct something, though. He says yeah. on the web page that I built it with you. You and Roger built it. Me and Roger built it. I had nothing yeah. to do with this. I'll, here, I'll put my fingers Yay. on it. Okay, I, I polished it. Leo's spirit was, was guiding us. <laughs> I'm thrilled. I'm really excited about this. 
Well, you know, should we talk about it? Yes. Yeah. All right. If you're heading off to school this fall, if you're thinking about building a personal computer, what we've done, we put together, you know, Roger and I and everybody else sat down. We put on our collective thinking cap. Well, so you remember college. It was so many years ago for me. I. You know, oh, you know, we wore those little propeller beanies when I was. I, I talked to my cousin who's a recent graduate, a recent graduate. I talked to a buddy of mine who's still buried in law school. We chatted. Really, you did yeah. research. Wow. We we talked to them and then we completely ignored them and went for something better. <laughs> Such a deal we've got for you folks. We've assembled all the components, the software, and the peripherals. And basically, the idea is we wanted something to be good for now that would be expandable, mm -hmm. that would offer performance, that wouldn't be the most expensive thing you could buy, and still have a lot of fun. All right, too. well, take us on a tour. Let's start. We, you always got to start with the. Our, our three-day tour it's starts with a case. Now, we have actually have an Antec case spec'd out for about $62 on the website. Uh, this because is that's a brand name. Usually right. when you go to swap meets, you don't get names. Yeah, we actually found this at, at uh, Central at, uh, Computer. Central Computing, yeah. yeah. Central Central computer. computer. A place that has taken more of my money than I really do. Me I live there. It's in San Francisco. Just, it's one of those just yeah. computer places. And you know, know what? We, we went in. It's a, it's a whopping $42 computer case. It's got a built-in 230-watt power supply. That's plenty. It's got a great amount of power. Roger gave us a shake test. He picks it up and he shakes it like What are you this? looking for when you do that? Roger. Rattling? He doesn't yeah. like rattle? He doesn't like rattling. He doesn't want a case that might break. He wants a nice, firm, solid case. This is a metal frame. It's good. I think it's yeah. great. And it still actually has a fair amount of open it inside. Well, you know, some people say, oh, you want the big tower case. But you know what? College yeah. rooms, you don't have a lot of room, so yeah. this makes perfect sense. My college dorm, you know, at, at lovely Pace University was the size of a shoebox. I'm wearing mine tomorrow. If you're going to do that, I'm going to wear mine. So we've actually got in here, we've got a Toshiba. It's a DVD ROM, it's a CDRW, and it's a CDR drive. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah. This is DVD and CDR. But it also records CDs. And CDRW. That's a weird hybrid. Yeah, it's a weird hybrid. It's, it's probably the most expensive component in the machine. It was 289 bucks. Mm -hmm. But here's a justification. You need storage. Right. You burn it to CDR. you got a cheap way to make gifts for all your friends and family over the holidays. Plus, you, you can watch movies. movies. Exactly. I think it's pretty DVDs getting really common, Blockbuster, and a bunch of other places. Only problem is if you want to make this to this copies, you've only got one CD, you might want to go out and get a cheap CD player just so that you can make this to this copy. So we got, you know, we got a fat 20 gigabyte hard drive inside this, so you'll have oh, lots of room to make this. All right, copy. all right. So we also you have a floppy. Yeah, your basic 1495 TX floppy. I think there's a Mitsumi. There's a couple other. Got to have a floppy. There. No zip drive though. Well, you know what? We figure with the CDR, the CDRs are costing around 65, 75, 80 cents a piece. Right. I'd rather burn it to CDR, or you got it to CDRW drive. Right. Right. So you can burn it. You get a piece of and CDRW how burn media. It? Is it ADX? I want to say it's. 8x, but I think it's a little slower than that. All right. All right. I'm having it's, a brain. I think it's 8x. Yeah, it's well. fast enough anyway that it, you could. Yeah. You could it's, it's, it's 4x. 4X. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, but it's a DVD, Leo. Oh, all right. Oh, poor baby. <laughs> it, it takes a whole 15 oh, minutes to record a CDR. No, I'm, glad I'm not in college. Mr. 12 hard drive. CDR you said brother. 20 gigs? 20 gigs. This is an amazing deal. Oh, my pointers like are, are so cheap. Can somebody walk away with my finger. Here. There's one behind you. In the, in the tool chest. Uh, yeah, this Isn't this is fabulous? Point. We got a 20 gigabyte hard drive. This is a Mac store. Uh, 20 gigabyte, 7200 RPM, Ultra 66 for $134. Uh, it's not the retail packaging, so you don't get the big box, but you get 20 gigabytes of the 7200 RPM hard drive. Lots of performance, lots of quick petting it, Leo. <laughs> Stop it. I want a job on the Price is Right. <laughs> hey, Leo, you, you'll never be able to. Can you believe it? 139 bucks for two, but for 20 gigs. 20 gigabyte. Yeah, I paid five. Five hundred dollars for a five uh, megabyte in a five hundred megabyte right, hard drive. That's right. That's causing right. me emotional. Mobo. Everybody's interested in our Mobo processor chips. What did you What did you put? Okay, in we went and and uh, I want you to hold back in the booth. We went with a, an Intel processor, and actually what we're looking at right here is, is an eight bit. SE6 motherboard based on the Intel 815 chipset. Now, I like this. No ISA slots. This ISA is dying out quick. All folks. PCI. You've gotten six PCI slots. But now, yeah. I guess this is why you chose the uh, 815. Uh, the 820 motherboard, right. the other Intel low end, doesn't have this thing. That's an yeah. AGP slot. Yeah, the, the Intel, the 810, the 815 is replacing the 810. 810, I'm sorry, not 820. Yeah. Both of them have integrated graphics, which means you've got built in graphics. So I don't need a video card. For 149, you got a motherboard and you got video. Sounds too? Uh, sound too, but we actually put a sound card okay. in because we're all about the music in college. That's true. That's true. But you've actually—it's not spectacular 3D performance, but we've had Quake 3 up and running, and 
I don't think that's mine. And you can always upgrade, and that's exactly. the point of having the AGP. That's spot. the important thing about it. This is that. a very upgradable PC, and that's well, a good, that's well, we, good The idea of what we wanted, we wanted a machine that was going to have room to improve, right. and as you scrounge and, and, and save during the summer months, you can add more stuff. 815 chipset, what, so it's got to be an Intel processor. What did you choose in here? We actually ended up, we looked at uh, Celeron 566 and a 600 megahertz Pentium 3. We decided on the 600 megahertz Pentium 3. It's a flip chip packaging. So instead of the Celeron, which everybody would have thought in a low-cost PC you'd put in, you've got well, a P3. Yeah, yeah, so we paid about ninety-five dollars more. Okay. Okay, so it was like ninety-five bucks for the for the seller on it's hundred and eighty four. Did you notice any difference in performance? A whopping forty eight percent improvement on uh concentration and stuff. Well that's a yeah. huge difference. That's enough that's, to really that's justify. That's a big chunk. Okay. That's a huge amount of So P three, are you overclocking it at all? We overclocked it a little bit. We actually were running it at uh, one thirty three megahertz bus, it's a one hundred and eight, which gives us a, a speed of about six hundred and sixty seven megahertz. You can probably push it harder, but at the moment So you yeah. gotta be putting S D RAM that's PC one thirty three now yeah. because you're upgrading the bus speed. And you know what? The price difference between P C one thirty three and P C one hundred is like five bucks. We went with a chunk of sixty four megabytes chunk of PC-134 from Kingston. Okay. So again, this is not the top of the line PC. This is a budget yeah. PC. We're going to give you the price at the uh, end, at the end, and you'll see why. 64, but upgrading is always a possibility. Always got a possibility. The Sound card, you really save money on this. Yeah, we actually, we found an OEM packaging, again, at Central Computer. This is a... It's a white box. Yeah, Creative and Sonic. It's a PCI-based sound card. 25 bucks. Good, you know, good sound quality. It's not going to blow your high-end stereo no, away. This has got wavetable synthesis. Exactly. It's going to be fine for MP3. Great for game. Great for MP3. This is actually one of the best sound cards out, out there, yeah. and for and 25 it's bucks. 25 bucks. Not a sound blaster live, but I think it's just every bit yeah. as good. You do put a NIC in here, and that's because, yes. uh, well, I guess most colleges a have. A ton of dorms are actually wired for Ethernet. If not, you're going to, this is a $20 card. It's a 10 Great 100 card, Ethernet yeah. card from Net. Ah, 10 100, very smart. Yeah. That way you can uh, auto-sense the high-speed network yeah. if they've got it. Yeah, we actually flashed it. It was 20 bucks. Actually, we got this one for $17, I think, 33 cents. And it's a neck here, which is great. Yeah. Now, I love this. You decided to go with a cordless mouse and keyboard. Well, yeah. I mean, I, our desks are permanent. Mine was permanently cluttered in college. Who needs the wires? You can sit back, get some wires off your desktop, you know, browse right. from across the room, control the way, you know, the pages from across the room. bucks for that. That's the cordless. I'm sorry. I just moved it. The cordless desktop from Logitech. Finally, we've got to do the monitor. 17-inch LG Electronics Studio Works 775C. I would have uh, liked to have seen a bigger monitor, but I guess... I well, it's about a, around two hundred dollars for under two hundred dollars, one hundred eighty-eight dollars oh, for this great. This is a very good monitor. This is a very nice monitor. Yeah. To get into the nineteen-inch range, you're talking about three hundred to three hundred and fifty dollars. So within reason, if you got the extra scratch when you're putting the machine together, there's some great low-end ones um, from Samsung, from IBM. Right. IBM one is spectacular for about three hundred fifty dollars. But wait till you see the price and you'll see yeah. why we put this all together. But we're not done yet. No, no, because the price has to include software. Yes, all and right. toys and toys. So right now, this whole thing should, should tell you. Would you want to know the price? Nope, you don't have time. Oh, well. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. We're going to continue the collegiate PC segment. We're still going to show you how to get ease them. Tease them? Tease them. I'm supposed to stroke you here, folks. How to get all your work done with cheap and free software. And then, if this, that wasn't enough, we're going to look away to turn the collegiate PC into the ultimate dorm room entertainment system, Leo. That's huh? time, huh? yeah. Are you guys in? Remember, July 25th yeah. to July 28th, you can win this collegiate PC. Website for details. We'll have a final word right after this. Hi, this is Dave in Lexington, Kentucky. Captain Leo will be right back when the screensavers continues.
Oh boy, we got emails, we got faxes when the screensavers continues? That's right now. That's right now. <laughs> oh man. Here's what you got to say. I guess we don't have poll results because we got no time for it. Here's an interesting we're again talking about video editing desktops. Uh, and he's gonna he's wanting if you should get a firewire hard drive versus a SCSI hard drive or one of the new ATA sixty six or one hundred. What kind of system? Well, the truth is a FireWire hard drive is either a SCSI hard drive or an ATA 66 or 100. All they're doing with these FireWire drives is taking existing drives and putting them with FireWire cases and FireWire interfaces. They're still the same drive, so it's not any faster. The interface is faster, it's faster than SCSI, but if it's got a SCSI drive in there, it's not going to be any faster. So it's just for convenience. Don't think you're getting a faster drive. Hey, we're out of time. That's it for this edition of Screen Savers. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Patrick Norton. No time. Thanks for joining we'll see us. See you later. Next time. More of the PC tomorrow. Tune in. Oh, 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 oh,